Hey, how do you doodly do? In the previous episode, I was in the amazingly beautiful Charingay. In this episode, I take the ferry to Lofoten and visit the Norwegian Fishing Village Museum in Å, where I get a guided tour. Patrons and supporters should check out the members area for a special treat. If you want to support this channel, you may join as a patron or as a channel member and get early ad-free access to these videos. You can also help by liking, commenting and subscribing. Now let's get to it. Come along. I got on the ferry from Bude to Moskines in Lofoten. The trip over is about 3 hours and is a very popular ferry. It is possible to drive to Lofoten, but the most people take the ferry one way and drive the other. I chose to take the ferry out and drive back through Lofoten. Bude is the second largest city in northern Norway and I felt a little bad I didn't spend more time to check it out. It's a very pretty city but it was not on my to-do list this time around. But I'm sure I will be back to check it out someday. Lofoten was my main destination this early summer tour. As we are approaching Lofoten we can see the massive wall of mountain with sugar tops meeting us. It is a very majestic sight even from far away, but the closer you get the more impressive it is. I have seen this view from the ocean before when I used to work on fishing vessels back in the 90s. But this was the first time for me to come here as a tourist to enjoy these sights up close. Lofoten is very well known for its rich fishing of cod in the months from January through April, when the fish come into the coast to spawn. I was so excited as we approached Moskines. What you see here is uh, cod heads that are hanged to dry. Uh, Lofoten has specially rich fishing of cod. Uh, the big cod that comes into Lofoten in January to uh, April uh, is locally named Skrei. And uh, they dry this. Here are just heads, but they also dry the rest of the cod like this. And we export it to uh, countries like uh, Brazil, Portugal, and many of the Spanish countries. And uh, in trade with that, we get back coffee, sugar, and stuff like this. And that are cheap products in Norway, because we trade with the fish. I can tell you that even if we're outside just now, and sky is blue, and there's a lot of fresh air, you can still smell it's fishy. <laughs> Yeah, the surroundings are absolutely beautiful here. And as you know, they have the midnight sun, but uh, the mountain tops here make shade from the sun late at night. So many places you won't see the sun at night. And if you see it at night, maybe you won't see it in the morning. Okay, I just gotta make a little joke here because um, I don't know if this place exists in uh, international maps. Because this place is named by one letter only, and that is the letter O, which is a special Norwegian or Scandinavian letter. So it doesn't exist in uh, the English vocabulary. It is an A with a dot over, like this. Here you can see they have the cod hanging 
just like they had the heads at the other place. But since this is a museum now, I'm guessing they just put a few up just for display. I really like how they've been building the houses here because they build them tight in a tight area and they build them on poles in the water. Uh, so they won't use up the valuable land space. I don't think they would have managed to get permission to build like this today. So it's quite unique for the area. Yeah, you might think I should leave them alone, but I think these birds are pretty used with people when they are building nests so close to them. And uh, these buildings we are surrounded by uh, were built uh, during the 19th century. Uh, back in those days, the whole village and the area was owned by a family, the Ellingson family. Uh, and uh, this manor um, uh, house is still owned by the family. So, as I've mentioned, uh, a lot of fishermen traveled here and um, when they arrived they needed accommodation. So usually the skipper uh, of each uh, boat crew went to the landowner and rented uh, a cabin. Not all fishermen could afford uh, this luxury to, to, to rent a cabin. So those, just, uh, those fishermen just uh, turned over the boat and were sleeping under. Oh, in the middle of the winter? In the middle of the winter, yes. And you know the temperatures here around the middle of the winter? Uh, yes, uh, it's actually not too cold. Because of the Gulf Stream, it's not uh, as cold as on the mainland. But still, the wind makes it a lot colder. Uh, I would say it can be even minus 10, but usually it's, it's milder. This, this winter, I think it was around minus 6 when it was cold. But you can feel it minus 15 <laughs> if yeah. the wind blows, mm. <laughs> yes. Or first up will be the cabin, the yep. fisherman's cabin, and we can have a look inside to see how fishermen used to live. We are in the first room, and if you look around, you see that it looks like a storage, because mm. it was used as a storage, the first room. There are huge gaps in the planking on the wall and on mm. the floor to keep it as dry and as clean as possible. Mm. Um, so this was the living area? This was the living area, but I would it's like living, working, um, sleeping area of... It was, it was a universal yeah. space here, yes. This is a cod liver oil lamp. And uh, this kind of lamps were used in whole Norway. And uh, in Lofoten these were more, more uh, popular than any other lamps until the end of the 19th century, actually. Mm. Uh, local blacksmith produced usually uh, the lamp, the body of the lamp, and they used cod liver oil. They poured uh, the, the oil uh, in the top tray. They had a little cord here, mm. which was on light. And then the bottom tray took any, any dripping. Yeah. And here we display methods of making cod liver oil. Uh, the oldest method was um, basically fermenting cod liver. Yes, this is uh, the largest building of the, of the museum. And here, um, on the ground floor, you see boats. No land boats. Um, That's this one? Yes, yes, this is one of uh, the smallest ones. The young people of Lofoten earn extra pocket money by cutting out and selling the cod tongues. And actually when this... It's a bit dark in here. Yes. And here we see um, the tools which uh, the blacksmiths used uh, uh, here. So they, they, they produced everything a village would need. They, they made knives and uh, replaced hooks and made hooks. Even knitting needles for the ladies. Fishing equipment and everything. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Lamps. This was just a taste of the very interesting guided tour at the museum. It is amazing how primitively fishermen lived back in the days. Well, that's it for this episode. I will try to upload more often now for a while. 
make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out when I go sailing here in Lofoten. Thank you so much to my patrons and supporters, especially my gold supporter Harvey Engwert. Check back again next week for more. Now give this video a like and leave a comment. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.